another 350,000 in the National Guard, the U.S. Army National Guard. And we have about 200,000 U.S. Army Reserves. We have a little over a million people in the Army. I'm the senior military person that oversees the Army, and my responsibility is to make sure that we are the Army is, has the right people. I'm responsible for training them to make sure they have the right resources to train. I have lots of help to do this. I don't do this myself. I have lots of help. And also to make sure they're ready. To make sure they are prepared that when our country asks them, they are prepared to go anywhere in the world. And so that's a pretty big job. Our budget that I manage uh, this year is somewhere around $150 billion uh, that we have to manage in order to make sure this happens. As I stand here today, we have about 70,000 soldiers deployed around the world. We have about 35,000 in Afghanistan. We have about 15,000 in Kuwait. We have another couple thousand in Jordan. We have uh, hundreds in Gunner, Turkey, other places. We have about another 80,000 soldiers uh, stationed in 150 countries around the world. Europe, Germany, uh, excuse me, Germany, Italy, Korea, and other spots in South America. And so my responsibility is to make sure they have what they need, we train them, we watch after them. And then we have about 250,000 Army civilians. And a lot of them, let me tell you also, because it comes under my control as part of the Army civilians that work up there, some military, but it's mostly civilians. They do a lot of technology development for the uh, they really do some advanced technology work for us that we use in developing new systems that we need in the Army. Uh, we have places like that all over the country. And then we have about 1.4 million family members that are very important to us because as we deploy our soldiers, we have to make sure that we're taking care of our families. So we have about 3 million people that we have to kind of watch after to make sure that we're taking care of It's a very big job. It's, it's incredibly important. This is one that's incredibly satisfying. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to award a Medal of Honor. And I don't know if you know what that is. But the Medal of Honor is the highest award that our country gives to heroism. And I had the opportunity to give it to Sergeant Kyle White. Sergeant Kyle White grew up in Seattle, Washington. He joined the Army. He deployed to Afghanistan. And about three years ago, on uh, one morning, his patrol was out, came under incredible heavy fire from the Taliban. There was about uh, 12 of them, and they were surrounded by about 150 Taliban. And it got somewhat chaotic, and about six of his compatriots were killed, and three others were injured. He risked his life saving those three individuals, ensuring that they were able to get better back risking his own life over a period of six hours. I want to, I want to go back to 12 people, 150 people. And his bravery ended up saving at least six lives. And that's why I've been in the Army for 30, 38 years on June 2nd. It's because of people like Sergeant Bob Wilson. It's because of what they stand for and who they are. And that they, they are there for each other. They stand for something that is important to us. Discipline, courage under fire. But most importantly, it's about the bond they form with those they serve with. And that's really what we're about. It's a special bond that's formed and having the opportunity to help our country and defend our country. I've had the opportunity to go all around the world. I've, 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 I've probably been in about 200 countries around the world during my career. And the one thing I tell everyone as I do that is when I come back is when I realize how fortunate I am that I was born in this country. Because when you go around and see how everybody else lives and the restrictions that they have, that they don't have the freedoms and liberties that we take for granted, in this country, you realize how lucky you are to be born here or to become a naturalized citizen here. That's why people, hundreds of thousands of people every year want to come and become citizens of the United States. 
There's a reason for that. It's because it provides you opportunity and freedoms that nobody else has anywhere in the world. And I have a chance to see the suppression of individuals firsthand as I've traveled around the world. So it's up to us, not me, but you, as you go forward with your lives to give back. And I don't mean to serve in uniform, that's up to you. But one thing you should think about is how you're going to give back to your community, to your town, to your country, to your state. And you should think about it. Because I think we take for granted how fortunate we are to live, live in this country and the freedoms that we're given. And I ask, I challenge all of you to think about that. Whatever you decide to do, whatever your goal in life is, go after it. Be passionate about it. Try to be the best in what you want to be. And then try to think about how do you give back to others? What are you going to do to make your community better? Whatever it might be. And if we all do that, this country is going to remain the best country in the world. It's going to remain great. And I've had the opportunity how much I really appreciate that now. Getting a chance to see others live. So I ask you to do that. I think that's the one thing I would ask you to do for me. And as I come back here and I've gotten to meet some of the people here, it's very clear to me the quality of the young men and women that go to school here. And so I know that you can take that challenge on as we go forward. So I'm proud to be back. I want to have a chance to ask me some questions about anything at all. So I want to stop here. We've got about 10 minutes. And I always say, okay, I'm not going to leave to ask at least three questions. So I'm going to open it up. If anyone would like to ask the general some questions, they can come down and sit here in the front. We're going to open up to the students. Hey, you uh, as you experience, um, our athletic program here tries to instill the core value of leadership in our athletes. And uh, with that in mind, uh, on behalf of the Morrisville Baseball Program, we'd like to offer you a gift. And in addition, our two captains would like to ask you questions about leadership. So this is Ryan Mullen. And this is Adam Cash.
But we, you know, you know, there's lots of times we had to overcome adversity together. And that's what is about, is what you do as an individual to overcome adversity, no matter what it is. That's really what I learned most about leadership. And when you're a leader, it's, it's about motivating people at a time when it's difficult. It's easy to motivate new people when things are going great. The difficult time is how do you motivate people, get people to work together when things aren't going so well. That's when true leaders come forward. So in my opinion, that's probably what I learned the most about. Anybody else? Anything at all? You have a question over here? Yeah, yeah. I know that's in the news with Benghazi and what happened there. You know, Benghazi was a very, you know, as it is in these kinds of situations, they're very chaotic. And it's really hard to get information about what's going on. Um, and so, you know, I wasn't there, so I gotta, I'm still kind of waiting to see what comes out of the investigation. But the one thing that's important is that when something happens like that, we have to pass information quickly, we have to understand what that information is, we've got to attempt to react as quickly as possible. So, in my mind, that's what I have to wait and see. Uh, but it's critical for us. One of the things that are very important is we have people who represent our government all around the world. And it's our responsibility to protect them. And we got to make sure that we do everything we can to protect them. And in our embassies around the world, there's Marines that are there, but they really just provide internal security. So, we have to make sure that when we think there's a threat, that they let us know so we can provide more support to make sure that those individuals are protected. For example, right now, we have deployed soldiers to South Sudan because of the, our embassy in Sudan has been threatened. So we're now able to deploy them.